All right, here we are, Sunday morning. Good morning to everybody. Should be a pretty good study this morning. Kind of getting started here a little bit early, a couple minutes early. Come over here and get some stuff opened up. Okay. I'm just let everybody kind of come in here. Say hi to everybody this morning. Hope everybody's been doing good. Everybody trying to stay sane in this insane world. Afternoon for me. Yeah, whatever. I guess we can't all say good morning. Some of us, it's not morning. Yep. Yeah, I saw your email, Brother Jacob, the thing of the goggles. Fauci saying that the goggles need to be part of it now, too, or something. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I don't know. They might have seen my baloney virus thing. They might be getting ideas now. You know, if they start saying chainsaw helmets and elbow pads, and you know, then we have a problem. <laughs> so, make sure you have your King James Bible. We're going to be going through a bunch of scriptures today in our study. Watching YouTube can spread COVID. I think so. COVID, I think, is more of a, a disease of the brain than anything else. So we'll wait till about 10 o'clock and get started here. And, uh, so Mm -hmm. Very true. The thing about there's more folks watching this than those who attend a local church. Yeah, but see, you're, you're somehow you're not legitimate unless you have a mortgage building. You know, then I, I, I could be a real preacher then if I had money on some big building somewhere. So, so weird. I don't get it. I reach so many people all over the world, but I'm not legitimate because I don't have a, you know, some kind of a battle building someplace. Uh, will you pray before you preach? Yes. We will be doing that. Um, um, do I drink coffee or tea? Do you think that those things in caffeine is unhealthy? Well, caffeine and it, I would say too much caffeine, yeah, is bad. And you can you can make arguments against caffeine and whatever, and you know, drink herbal teas and whatever else, but I do drink um, uh, sort of a black green tea blend, um, so I'm not real opposed to it. If, you know, if you're having to have it to get your day going, well, that's kind of an issue. Um, 
So yeah. Well, I guess we'll get started. Um, I have here a little notebook thing, and um, we will start out this morning with some prayer. And uh, does anybody have any quick little prayer requests that you'd like for me to pray for? We can do that real quick. If you just want to write it in the comment thing over there, you have a little, uh, just something you say, hey, could you pray for me for whatever? We'll do that here this week. Try that. Um, okay, Peter KJV, Peter, go on bladder. Okay, um, Okay, that'd be kind of under salvation, I love ones. Um, judge for struggles. Um, okay. Discernment. I'm looking down, so I hope I don't miss any here. I'm trying to write as quick as I can. Um, I probably shouldn't have written these down. It's kind of going too fast for me. All right. Um, boy, we're up to 108 watching. We might have to get a bigger church building soon. So, okay. Good morning, everybody. It's just coming in. We're just going to start out with some prayer here. Um, I think I have... I think um, okay some of these I just had to write down quickly so um, we'll start out with prayer here before we get into the uh, before we get into things here um, I, I apologize. Our, our internet connection here is not as good as I thought it was going to be. Um, 
I guess there's too many people on the internet in this town or something. I don't know. Um, we're back now, I, I think, here. So, um, so I think everything looks okay here. Um, so, all right, let's let's open with a word of prayer, and then we'll get into our Bible study for today. Um, okay, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I do thank you that we can um, gather together here in still in some freedom. We still are not being openly persecuted in the sense of being rounded up and tortured or something. So I do thank you for that, Lord, but these are certainly very trying times, and certainly there's a lot of wickedness going on. And Lord, I do pray for strength for the brethren out there that, that we would all take stands against this wickedness. And um, I want to bring a few things before you this morning, Lord. Um, a brother named Peter with his gallbladder. I pray that, Lord, that you would give him ways that he could heal it without having to have it removed. And um, I pray that you would please just open his eyes to the truth of, of ways that he could um, heal it. And I pray, Lord, that you would also um, heal it there for him as well. Um, I do pray, Lord, for salvation of loved ones. There's a lot of people out there. All of us, I think, have people that we know, relatives or whatever that are lost and on their way to hell. Lord, I do pray that you would please um, give us opportunities, open doors of, of opportunity to witness to our lost loved ones. And Lord, I pray for conviction for them as they see things getting worse. I pray that some of them would wake up. I know most won't, but I do pray that some that you would give them a chance, Lord. And um, uh, sanctification, Lord, another thing that was requested, um, that all of us have areas where we need to get closer to you, things that we need to get out of our lives. It's going to be what the study is about today. And I just pray, Lord, that you would help us each with uh, issues of sanctification. And um, I do pray for Sally. I saw that uh, she asked for a prayer. And uh, Lord, you know what her situation is. You know what she needs, Lord, needs help with. And so I pray, Lord, that you would be very near and dear to her and answer her prayers. Um, I pray for Alexander, Alexander Hartley as he is moving, the stress of, of moving and everything. Lord, I do pray that you would be with him and, and um, just uh, keep him safe as he's going through that process. I pray, pray for Aaron Judge for the different struggles that he goes through. And... Um, I pray, Lord, for uh, discernment. Somebody asked for discernment for these times. Their family, they need discernment for what to do with the times that they're in right now. And we all need that too, Lord. Another big issue, um, whether to speak up or to remain quiet or, or as your word talks about both things, when things get really bad, I know that it's, it's your judgment that's ultimately coming on this nation and all the countries out there. Um, you're tired of the sin, Lord, and you're judging these wicked people. Um, but sometimes I think it's good to speak up at the right moment. So, Lord, I just pray for discernment for these times. Um, I, I know one uh, people ask for prayer for their teen daughter that she doesn't really have any good saved friends. and She's trying to witness to her lost friends. But peer pressure is very, very strong. And, and it's very easy for a young teenage girl to get drawn in and pulled away from you. So I pray, Lord, that you would help her to be strong in her faith and not uh, compromise. And um, I pray for the brother that, that uh, asked for healthy delivery of his coming daughter, um, that everything would go well there, Lord, that you keep them um, mindful of, of good nutrition and uh, just all the, the things that will lead to a healthy birth, Lord. I do pray for that. And another, um, ask for help with the issues of lust. And Lord, I do pray that you would please um, help a lot of people out there with that issue, Lord. It's very difficult to live in a, in a time when even advertisements are geared around lust to trigger people into wanting to get into covetousness. And there's just so much evil, Lord. And I, but I thank you that we can live a clean life through sanctification, through the Holy Spirit. And I pray, Lord, that we would all be attentive to your word this morning and um, that your Holy Spirit would convict uh, where sin is as part of the process of sanctification. And I pray all these things in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Okay. Um, so, all right, we are going to get into the study here. 
we have, if you have your King James Bible, we're going to be looking up the verses of Scripture. And um, we're going to be talking today about struggling with sin versus defending sin. Okay, now, um, this is probably the number one thing that I get attacked on. Uh, Denlinger thinks that he's the only one that's saved. Denlinger thinks that uh, anybody that disagrees with him in an area, you know, whatever else is, is lost and whatever. And he teaches lordship salvation, all of this stuff. I've been attacked on these things for years. And I have tried to make it very clear. There are people that struggle with sin. We all have struggled with sin from time to time. Okay, I get that. I understand. All right, nobody is disputing that. All right. There's no such thing as a sinlessly perfect Christian. Sure, absolutely. But there's a big difference between struggling with sin and defending sin. And when somebody I see, when they defend sin, something that is clearly wrong, there's no question, and they defend it and try to justify themselves, now we have a problem. Now I have to look at that person and say, I don't think that you got saved. Okay, there's a problem there. There's no sanctification. If there's no chastening, you might have somebody that, that you know, is in rebellion. They've gotten away from the Lord. They've gotten away from reading his word. They're not praying, whatever else. They fall into a sin. They kind of try to defend it. And you come and you, you rebuke that. And they get offended and they say, hey, you know what? That's offensive to me, whatever. And they'll try to, you know, make excuses and they'll try to attack you and whatever else. Um, but you'll see chastening there if they're genuinely saved. If they defend their sin and there is no chastening and they continue in that sin for a long time, year, two years, or more, then you're dealing with a false convert, period. Okay. Well, let's look at what the Bible says about the thing of sin, this whole thing about sin and you know whether you struggle with it or you defend it. Go to your in your Bible to the book of Romans, chapter six. Um, this is probably one of the greatest passages that talks about, you know, what happens when you get born again. You know, the the fact that you no longer are supposed to be living your life in sin. Now, this is kind of my go-to chapter for that. Romans chapter 6, and we'll go through all the different scriptures I have written out here, and then we can go and discuss it and whatever else. Uh, Romans chapter 6, verse 1. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God's grace is there when you get saved. You understand that. I mean, some of us were more vile than others. You know, some of you didn't live quite long enough to really get really messed up. But all of sinned, sure, absolutely. But when you realize, you, I mean, I've done some really wicked stuff and God saved me, that's grace. But do you continue in that sin? God saved me as grace for me, so I can just continue doing it. You're missing it. Verse 2, God forbid. You're not supposed to continue in sin. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Why would you want to? Sin is negative. It's bad for you. Why do you want to live in sin? It makes no sense. Verse 3. Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death? Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. Now I've talked with these, these easy believers and people that just say, you believe? I, I, I believe that I'm saved, therefore I am. Kind of this philosophical thing. You know, well, I believe, so I can just go on and do whatever I want to do and whatever else. And they'll come to that verse and they'll say, see, the key word in verse 4 is should walk in newness of life. It doesn't mean you have to. <laughs> you just kind of think, oh, come on. You know, we should walk in newness of life. It's saying there you're supposed to, right? When you don't, well, it doesn't mean that you got lost or something like that. You know, if it said we must, you know, walk in newness of life, then all the Pentecostal holiness Nazarene people would say, well, see, there you go. You know, uh, no, 
um, we should walk in newness of life. But what happens if you don't? Well, God's going to chasten you. You're going to feel guilty about it. Okay? Verse 5, For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection, knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, but henceforth we should not serve sin. Key words there, should. <laughs> Easy believers in people. Uh, no, we're supposed to be changed. I mean, if all salvation does is just changes your destination and doesn't help you with your life, what good is salvation, really? It's really not any good. I mean, you know, you get somebody who's suicidal and they're and they're on drugs and their life is just really wrecked. You say, pray this prayer or just believe, you know, if you talk to some of the really big wing nuts out there, just believe and you'll go to heaven when you die. I say, what about helping me right now with my drug issue? Oh, well, God really can't do anything with that. It just you'll get to go to heaven, you know, when you overdose the next time you do drugs. No, there should be a change there. The old hymn, you know, what a wonderful change in my life has been wrought since Jesus came into my heart. It's an understood thing. You know, you're a Christian, something changes. You get saved, you're born again, something changes. Okay? We will struggle with sin. But the problem is when people defend the sin. That's the problem. Verse 7, for he that is dead is freed from sin. Now we now if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him, knowing that Christ being raised from the dead dieth no more, death hath no more dominion over him. For in that he died, he died unto sin once, but in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. What's it why is it we hearing this stuff about Christ? Verse eleven. Likewise. It's saying the things about Jesus Christ and it says likewise. That means you're supposed to do this too. Likewise, reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Dead to sin. You're not supposed to justify it. And I'll tell you right now, there will be times that you will do be doing something completely in ignorance, and all of a sudden the Lord will convict you, or you'll hear somebody saying, condemning this thing that you're doing, and you'll say, I had no idea that that was wrong. It isn't just some kind of a thing that, you know, the Lord saved you and you have two weeks to get your life sanctified. No, you're, you, it's going to be a lifelong thing, a, a process of sanctification. And there are certain things the Lord's going to take some time to, you know, work out of your life. So, yeah, questions after the study, by the way, I see Sister Chantre there. Um, anybody have questions, just save them for the end. You're supposed to be following along in your Bible right now. Okay. Um, verse 12, let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body that ye should obey it in the lusts thereof. Uh, sin will reign over you. Um, oh, I, you know, I, I know when to quit. I know, you know, I can smoke these cigarettes, but uh, I know when to quit. Okay, how about you quit right now? Well, uh, sin's reigning in you. Hey, I just like to play a video game now and then to kind of de-stress a little bit. Okay, can you just walk away from and quit just like that? I speak from experience. No, you can't. It's something that draws you back. Yeah, alcohol, pornography, uh, go down through the list. You can't just walk away from it. Sin will reign over you. You can't just have a little bit of sin in your life just now and then. Just I like to kind of just dabble with sin, you know. No, I mean, I just, let me just, I'm just going to put a little bit of cyanide in my glass of water. A little bit won't hurt. Bad idea. Uh, verse 13, neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. God has called us to live a righteous, holy, separate life. And we forget that sometimes because we compare ourselves with other people. And, you know, we look at these modern churches. I, I cannot relate to these modern churches and these, you know, these male pastors wearing skinny jeans and little shirts and things and, and talk around walk around talking to how God loves you. They're not even holding a Bible. Big 
television screens in the back and laser lights. And I, I can't even relate to that stuff. I just look at that and think, what is this? I would walk into one of those places if my life depended on it. You know? Just crazy. We're supposed to be different than the world. We're supposed to look different, act different, think different, speak different. It's supposed to be that way. Verse 14, for sin shall not have dominion over you, for ye are not under the law, but under grace. What then? Shall we sin because we are not under the law, but under grace? God forbid. Again, you will see the people that defend their sin, and they'll say, we're under grace. We have grace. We have grace. My oldest brother, heavy metal guy, um, he just, I, I just, I'm learning more and more to appreciate God's grace. You know, he'd say that. I remember being down there in Pennsylvania, and it, God's grace, God's grace. You know, uh, you're doing a lot of wicked things. You're, you're, you know, renting Hollywood movies and playing them for your children. Yeah, but God's grace is there. His grace is so good. So good that you can continue in sin without any conscience. It's not right. Again, you know, you see the thing, verse 2, God forbid, verse 15, God forbid. We're not supposed to mess around with sin, brethren. Verse 16, know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. But God be thanked that ye were the servants of sin, but ye have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered you. Being then made free from sin, ye became the servants of righteousness. We are bond servants of Jesus Christ. Again, the, the easy believism crowd, they hate that fact. That you are a bond servant. You are bought with a price. You are a slave. Take my yoke upon you. The Lord puts a collar around your neck and he says, I own you now. I will tell you what to do. And if you disobey me, I'm going to have to yank on that chain a little bit. Chasing you. Might have to beat you a little bit. What a terrible, politically incorrect thing to think about. And yet there it is. Hmm. Servants of righteousness. Verse 19, I speak after the matter of men because of the infirmity of your flesh. For as ye have yielded your members, servants to uncleanness and to iniquity, uh, unto iniquity, even so now you yield your members, servants to righteousness, unto holiness. For when ye were the servants of sin, ye were free from righteousness. What fruit had ye then in those things whereof ye are now ashamed? Uh, get back to that here in a minute. For the end of those things is death. One of the best ways to tell if somebody's really truly saved or not is if they're ashamed of their lost life. If they're ashamed of their sin. How do you feel when you go out there and you look at pornography? How do you feel when you're done? Do you feel good? Or do you feel ashamed? How do you feel when you're up... Uh, Hours and hours and hours trying to beat a certain level in a video game. And you realize, I just paid, I just spent six hours playing that video game. When's the last time I spent six hours reading my Bible? How do you feel when you have a chance to witness and you don't take it? And you keep your mouth shut when the Lord is telling you, say something, speak something. How do you feel? Do you feel good about yourself or do you feel ashamed? See, the modern churches, what they want to do is they want to teach you, you should never feel ashamed. That lowers your self-esteem. You should always feel good about yourself. God wants you to enjoy your life. And yeah, they do this. No, you should feel ashamed. That should be a normal part of your life as a Christian. Oh, Lord, I'm sorry. I can't believe I did that thing again. And I know you forgave me, Lord, for this thing years ago, but I still just, it comes back to my mind when I hear that song or when I do this thing. And, oh, Lord, I can't believe you saved me. Boy, I just, I'm, I'm just, it, shame. But uh, when you're lost, you don't have much shame. It's kind of interesting. I'll just tell this little story here. My truck is parked right over this way, out on this side of our uh, office here in town and i have my scripture verses you know as a faithful saying worthy of all acceptation that christ jesus came into the world to say sinners and i have sinners in bigger letters um you know and i have the thing of uh you know and i forget the other verse i have but they're both i have sinners highlighted 
and the neighbor over this way over here um, just put on the back of his truck I love crack whores why see conviction we used to get a lot of people walking past here on the sidewalk right out here you can see the vehicles going by occasionally they're zipping by the window here um, but we used to get a lot of people walking by on the sidewalk all of a sudden that truck got parked out there and traffic has slowed down as far as foot traffic is concerned and my truck already got keyed by the way <laughs> thankfully uh, the truck is too too old and too rusted and, and everything else it's not even inspectable anymore so I just parked it here as a, a nice you know billboard for the for the Lord and put some scripture on it and stuff but somebody's already keyed my vehicle you know twice and I'm just looking at it saying well it's kind of a nice you know it should have been a little more straight but you know What's it mean? Nothing. You know? But see, uh, the fact of the matter is, when you are a lost person, um, you're not going to have shame. You know, the Bible talks about fools making a mock at sin, and they do. And you'll see people that profess to be Christians, and they'll do the same thing. Oh, I guess if I was just a little goody too, she's a little holier than now. I guess I could just, you know, I, I, oh, alcohol is bad. Oh, it's evil. Ooh, you know, you'll see them do it. They will make a mock at sin. But you get saved and you realize that Jesus had to die a horrible death for my sin. And it makes you feel ashamed. When you mess up, it's a, it's a great shameful thing in your life. It's a challenge. But continuing, verse 22. But now being made free from sin and become servants to God, ye have your fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting life. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. You know, something that I'm obsessed with is trying to earn different wages than, than what I did in my past. Um, I earned a lot of wages as a sinner in my past sinner that was not saved I'll say it that way I'm still a sinner saved by grace but my point is um, it was it was a, a bad thing a lot of a lot of things I did that were really really stupid and I've got quite a, an account of uh, wages that I've earned and I've had to pay for some of those already um, I have scars on me because of the stupid things I've done in my past and I deserve every bit of it you know, if the Lord made me a quadriplegic, I would say, well, Lord, you had every right to do that. Um, but I'm going to try to earn different wages. I'm going to try to lay up treasure in heaven. I'm going to try to do my best. And if the Lord convicts me of some sin, I, I try everything I can. <laughs> I just, I fall down sometimes. It's terrible. All of you do as well. You know, if you're born again, you know the Lord's convicted you of things and you try to get through it. And you, oh, I, I failed again, Lord. You know, we're supposed to have a fight in our lives it's supposed to be there we are supposed to be struggling with sin and not defending the sin and that's why I, I have to look I, I look at these people and I say this guy over here and I see he's defending sin and doing things that are wicked and I just have to say you know what I can't believe that that guy's saved I just can't believe it uh, he's defending sin he's not struggling with it and it's you know a long progression of it too that they're doing this for years and years and years next let's go to Romans chapter 7 verse 14 we'll go down through these passages um, here because this is one that uh, people will turn to to justify their sin um, and it's so funny because it's actually the opposite it's not justification for sinning it's actually showing this horrible struggle that you go through when you do sin the things that you are now ashamed of Let's read Romans chapter 7, verse 14. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. For that which I do, I allow not. For what I would, that do I, uh, that do I not. But what I hate, that do I. And they say, see, right there. Paul was sinning. Paul was living in sin. So you can't have this sinless, righteous, holy life that you claim that you can have. Um, why did Paul say he hates those things? You know, I, I, so many people that have left this ministry that have said, you know, Denlinger teaches work salvation, backloading work salvation, and all this other stuff. They go, now I just don't have the guilt anymore. 
I'm just able to live my life and I, I, I believe the facts of the gospel. I have a head knowledge and praise God, I can just go out and do whatever I feel like doing. And I don't feel this condemnation anymore. And what, Huh? Paul is saying the things that I fall into doing and the, the temptations I give into, I hate it when I do that. He's now ashamed of those things. Paul is not saying, oh, well, eh, no big deal. I'm ashamed. I hate this. Lord, I'm sorry. Why did I do that again? You see? So to use Romans chapter 7 to justify living in sin is just shows your lost condition. Plain and simple. Verse 16. If then I do that which I would not, I consent unto the law that it is good. Now then it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. Again, people will use that. They'll say, well, your, your flesh is prone to sin. Therefore, if you are sinning, then it's just, be, I have no choice. It's just the way it is. It's just, we all sin, so, you know, it's okay. Just go ahead. That's not what the scripture is saying. Okay. Um, your sin, your flesh will sin. That is true. Okay. But that doesn't, that's, it's, you're supposed to fight that. Right? You're supposed to hate it, be ashamed of it when you sin. Not just justify it and say, oh, I'm under grace. Just grace. Fine. Not supposed to be that way, brethren. Verse 18, for I know that in me, that is in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. For to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good I find not. Uh, again, if we're just supposed to have a flippant attitude and defend our sin, and oh, come on, it's not a big deal. I can do this. It's not, I don't, you know, my conscience doesn't convict me. Wink, wink, you know, yeah. Um, how does that work out with that? I know that in me dwelleth no good thing. Is that uh, approved by modern psychiatry? By the modern uh, feel-good, charismatic type churches? That, well, modern churches. I mean, how, when's the last time you heard one of those places saying, "I in you dwells no good thing. You're no good. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. Of course not. Best friend growing up, um, he told me the one time he said, I stopped going to church because they made me feel bad. Uh, you're not supposed to feel bad about yourself when you go to church. Definitely not. That's not there. You know. Right. Continuing, verse 19. For the good that I would, I do not. But the evil which I would not, that I do. Now, if I do it, now, if I do that, I would not. It is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. I find then a law that when I would do, do good, evil is present with me. For I delight in the law of God after the inward man. Okay, you say, well, you see again, see, when you're sinning, it's not you. It's the sin. Uh, it's your flesh. All right, and your flesh is strong because you're giving in to sin. That's what's going on there. You say, well, we can't fight it. See, it's just, it's not possible. You're a sinner. You might as well just get okay with it. Um, you know, uh, no, that's not what it's saying here. Let's continue. Verse 23, but I see another law in my members warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. Warring. You're fighting. You see? Every day is a fight. Okay? It's not just the coronavirus, put your mask on, the, all this stupid junk that's going on right now, and you can't do this, and you can't. There's a spiritual war going on, but there's a war going on in the flesh. Okay? Your three enemies as a Christian, the world, the flesh, and the devil. Always remember that. You, I would say your worst enemy is yourself, your flesh. You can debate that back and forth and whatever else, but you know what? Uh, the, the one that you can't get away from, well, you can hide from the world, at least for a little while. <laughs> Uh, you can kind of resist the devil and he'll flee from you. What about your flesh? Your flesh is there all the time. Every day, fighting, warring, striving against your flesh. Hmm. Now what do you come to the conclusion of? Verse 24. O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then with the mind, I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh, the law of sin. Um, there is pretty much no night at all anymore that I don't have nightmares. Just all the time. Just, just 
terrible, terrible dreams and just stuff. And I wake up and Lord, I don't think these things. I'm sorry. I don't know where this stuff's coming from. It's just, you know, I get attacked so much, spiritual attacks and whatever. And I just kind of say, oh, wretched man that I am. You know, oh, why would such things happen to a servant of the Lord? Because of the wicked life that I lived and how I destroyed my mind for many, many years before I got saved. That's why. You know, um, I deserve what I get. You know, I'm, I'm trying to to work harder at, at sanctification and, and okay, get, don't look at that, don't listen to that, whatever else, because I want to get stronger and closer to the Lord all the time. But it, I feel like you get closer to the Lord and, and the attacks from the devil get get more severe. And uh, you say, what are you going to do? Keep trying to get closer to the Lord. I'm not going to, well, you know, I don't want to really, you know, get too fanatical. I want to be as fanatical as I can for the Lord Jesus Christ. But let's continue. Jude chapter 1. Turn in your King James Bible to Jude chapter 1. You know, and why wouldn't you want to get closer to the Lord? That's another one that just confuses me. You know, ah, I'm no saint. Ah, I'm close enough to the Lord. Ah, I don't want to get any closer. Kind of like the children of Israel. They saw the Lord come down on the top of the mountain and they say, hey, Moses, you go talk to us. We're afraid of him. Weird. Jude chapter 1. Now we're going to start to see some of the thing of the people that defend sin. Jude chapter 1. Jude, the servant of Jesus Christ and brother of James, to them that are sanctified by God, the Father, and preserved in Jesus Christ and called. Grace unto you and peace and love be multiplied. Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write that unto you and exhort that ye should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. Earnestly contending. Uh, I would say that's being fanatical. Yeah, amen. Verse 4, for there are certain men crept in unawares. Oh boy, we're going to go over this verse in detail. Verse 4, who were before of old ordained to, the con to this condemnation, ungodly men, turning the grace of our God, remember Romans 6, into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. Wow. Certain men crept in unawares. They will pretend that they are saved. That's what they'll do. Uh, being a professing Christian, saying I'm a, I'm a saved Christian, is one of the best ways to cover up for the fact that you are a vile, rotten, filthy scoundrel. Uh, you say, give me an example of Roman Catholicism. <laughs> you know, pedophile priests and, and nuns that, that molest children. And I mean, some of the just most vile, horrible people. You look at all the gangsters, you know, uh, Richard Kuklinski, the Iceman, Catholic. Uh, uh, what was the guy? Um, can't think of his name. Um, keep thinking. Uh, Al Capone. There you go. Catholic. All these members of the mafia. Catholic, 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 Catholic. Adolf Hitler, son of the Catholic Church. Modeled his SS after the Jesuit order. You know, Catholic, Catholic, Catholic. Oh, they go to church and they come out and, oh, God bless you. Oh, God bless you. <laughs> Murderers. Crazy. Okay, they're, they're kind of obvious, but, you know, they're kind of a little, yeah, all right. But you get people coming in saying they're Bible believers. Yeah. Um, ungodly men. Do these men remind you of God? Do they remind you of the Lord? No. Turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness. Oh, boy. What is lasciviousness? Got my Webster's 1828 dictionary written out, definition written out here. Lasciviousness, definition number one, looseness, irregular indulgence of animal desires, wantonness, lustfulness. Irregular indulgence of animal desires. What do animals do? They eat, they sleep, they play, and they procreate. And is there anything wrong with any of that? No, of course not. You can eat, you can sleep, you can play. And if you're married, you can have children. Okay, not a problem. But dogs will do that stuff just, you know, till they get uh, wiped out. You know, I mean, they'll just, they'll, 
Well, I think you know what I'm saying. Uh, it's an it's a, a irregular indulgence. There's too much of it. They focus too much on sleeping. They focus too much on eating and eating the wrong kind of foods too. I might add, a dog will eat all kinds of horrible stuff. You know, I mean things. That sometimes you see a dog. Put that down. Don't don't eat that. What's wrong with you? <laughs> you know, they'll they'll do things like that. I mean, they're just incredible. Definition number two: tendency to excite lust and promote irregular indulgences. Stuff that's not regular. People turn the grace of our God into lasciviousness. Yeah. They will tell you, um, hey, you know, you can go and you can do this and you can do that and whatever. And it's okay. Just indulge in this stuff. It's not a problem. We're under grace. Yeah. We're going to see more about that later on. But uh, it says here in denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. Um, it's kind of funny. Um, they deny our only Lord God. So what are you talking about? My shirt. Super no Trinity man. You know, <laughs> I had to do that. Just wear my t-shirt underneath this dress shirt today. But, you know, they deny the only Lord God. I've seen this thing. You know, it's so funny. A God in three persons. Well, then there's not only one Lord God. There isn't. Only Lord God. That is a singular reference to one God and our Lord Jesus Christ. That's his title. It's not saying Lord God's over here and our Lord Jesus Christ. There's two different Lords. There's only one Lord, you know, that's on the back of my shirt. I'm not going to stand up and show that part, but, you know, there's only one Lord, only one Lord God. And these people deny that. Hmm. You know, I think the thing that blows my mind is the Bible is a lot more clear than we even realize. We just kind of take it for granted. You know, it's it's just salvation is simple. Um, this passage here is pretty easy to figure out. They turn the grace of our God into lasciviousness. Um, they deny the only Lord God. And you say, well, you know, you try to make excuses. No, just go with the plain teaching of Scripture. Then you're, there's no problem. Pretty amazing. But next, let's go to Romans chapter 3. Turn back to Romans chapter 3. Romans chapter 3 and verse 8. I had to throw this one in here. If you want to get there in your Bible, Romans chapter 3, verse 8. Uh, it says here, not rather as we be slanderously reported, and as some affirm that we say, let us do evil that good may come, whose damnation is just. There's a lot of people that try to say we can do evil that good may come. We have to be like the lost to win the lost. Did you ever hear that one? Uh, no. I remember a Baptist preacher I heard of, you know, sat there listening to a sermon, uh, Liberty Baptist Church. Guy Mosebrook was his name. And uh, he, he gave a really good uh Good analogy the one time and he said if somebody's dying in, in, in quicksand, they're, they're going down in quicksand Don't jump into the quicksand to help them come out of the quicksand You stand on the dry ground and you throw the rope to them and pull them out of that quicksand And he said why would you go and be part of sin in order to witness to sinners? It's not supposed to be that way But see lost people they'll try to justify their sin And you know the the church buildings they they have they have been run by lost people pretty much since the beginning. You know, there's people that have gotten in and they want to look like the world and they compromise and they get the church building thing and all the baggage that goes with it. They have never worked out. There are, there's always problems with them. Um, anybody who's been involved and I've been involved in church buildings for many years. So uh, most of my life actually was involved with uh, church buildings and the whole thing there. I could have definitely taken over a couple of them, but they all have problems. They're all just so messed up. And every single time you'll get lost people that start coming and then they start to run the thing and they'll start to come in and push the buttons and whatever else, you know, and it's all about what let us do evil that good may come. Let us go out and, and get ourselves into more debt so that we can get more people coming in so we can pay off the debt so we can get more debt so we can get more people coming in so we can pay off the debt. So we can... <laughs> it's, it's insanity. That's what these people do. 
let's do evil that good may come. Let's not speak against certain things. Let's let's take it easy on the new versions. Let's let's not get into the thing of the King James Bible as God's perfect word. Let's not talk against certain things or speak against certain things. That's what they'll do. Let us do evil that good may come. And what does Paul say? You see, people will say that about me too. And you know what I have to say? Same thing that Paul said. Whose damnation is just. You know. Again, that's another thing that we have to realize. You know, when you think about people dying and burning in hell for all of eternity, you just think, wow, that is harsh. I mean, it's not even just, okay, all right, all right, you've gone through enough. I'll just let you die or it will get you out of there forever and ever and ever and ever. They're burning. But you know what? There are people that we can sit back and say, you know what? Your damnation is just. You're getting what you deserve. Just that simple. Second Peter. Turn in your Bible to Second Peter. Back towards the back part of your Bible. I'll give you a hint where Second Peter is at. Second Peter comes after First Peter. Okay. Really helping you out there. Second Peter chapter 2. Going to read this chapter here. It's a real good one to go over the thing of again the people that turn the grace of our God into lasciviousness, people that just try to defend their sin and justify their sin. Second Peter chapter two verse one, but there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, crept in unawares, you know. Even not denying the Lord that bought them and bring upon themselves swift destruction. They deny the only Lord God. They go with this Trinitarian God and gods. The three person God freak show or whatever. Yeah. Look at verse two. Say, well, thankfully they won't turn many people away. They're just they're just a small little sect. And us Bible believers, we're the majority. Uh no. <laughs> Verse 2, and many shall follow their pernicious ways. Many. Big church buildings. Thousands attending. We don't have that many in our movement. Many shall follow their pernicious ways. By reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. You know, lost world out there, they think evil of you. They speak evil of you. They hate you. You know why? Because they ultimately hate Jesus Christ. We'll see that here in a little bit. Another passage we're going to go to. Um, there's a lot of people that follow them. Um, I'll tell you right now, there's there's good ways to make a lot of money. And one of the best ways is preaching. Okay? Preaching lies. Speak evil of the way of truth. Oh boy, you'll make good money. Like Kenneth Copeland, Joel Osteen, Benny Hinn, all these different guys. Uh, any church building pastor, you know, anymore. I mean, you know, just uh, avoid certain issues and you can make good money. And you speak evil of the way of truth. Oh, uh, yeah, that Denlinger, he's a conspiracy theorist. And there's people who the Denlingerites, you know, you're automatically a Denlingerite. By the way, if you're if you're in the comments here and you're a friend of the ministry, you're a Denlingerite. So congratulations. You know, you've arrived. <laughs> but that's what they do. They speak evil of the way of truth. But let's continue. Verse 3. And through covetousness shall they with feigned words make merchandise of you, whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not, and their damnation slumbereth not. Their damnation is just. The defenders of sin, the people that say, let's not be too hard, let's not, let's not, upset people that's that we, we can't lose precious families let's keep the precious families here in our church and you know keep those tithes coming in there their damnation is just they deserve what they're going to get for all of eternity their damnation slumbereth not verse 4 for if god spared not the angels that sinned but cast them down to hell and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment 
and spared not the old world, but saved Noah, the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly. We're seeing the same thing right now. And as I just got to pause here for a minute. Isn't it interesting that the number one thing about the, the pre-flood world, the whole world, world was filled with what? Violence. What are we seeing? Leading up to violence. A whole lot of violence. We're already seeing it with the riots and everything else and, and stuff. And it's just going to get worse. Why? Because the Lord said, as in the days of Noah, so too shall be in the days before the coming of the Son of Man. Violence is, is the greatest prophecy for these end times. It's just going to get worse and worse. Verse 6. And turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemn them with an overthrow, making them an ensample unto those that after should live ungodly. What was the ungodly sin of Sodom and Gomorrah? Sodomy. Homosexuality. Modern term for it. That's where we're at right now. Gay marriage is legal. The whole gay movement is just fine and whatever else. And the people that are trapped in the system are miserable. They're unhappy. They're trying to pretend that they're, oh, this is great and everything else. And yet they'll, they're so violent and hateful with their whole system. They're, they've gotten away from what God has designed. His design for a man and a woman. And now they're miserable. And they want to make other people miserable. And try to justify their sin. And shut down and silent, silence those who would oppose them. Terrible. Verse 7. And delivered just lot vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked. Are you vexed by the filthy conversation of the wicked? I am. I'm vexed with the filthy music. I'm vexed, vexed with the filthy mannerisms that people have. And the, the filthy talk that I hear. I'm vexed with it. I find it disgusting. Verse 8. For that righteous man... Dwelling among them and seeing and hearing, vexed vex his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds. Very interesting. Um, it's kind of funny too because if you look at the story of Lot, uh, Lot was struggling with some things in there in that city. He moved in for the money, for the connections. He pitched his tent, tent towards Sodom, moved in there, got a wife, had some children. Lot was making good money in Sodom and Gomorrah. Very interesting, and yet all the stuff that he did and all the things that he compromised on, and, and yet here in the New Testament, the Lord says, that righteous man. Hmm. Very interesting. If we are offended by what's going on in the world right now, that's what's important to the Lord. That's the neat thing about this. Um, if you're trying to justify your sin, then you're not right with God. And you can be saved, by the way, and not right with God. I'm, when I say not right with God, I'm saying you're out of fellowship. Verse 9, the Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptations and to reserve the unjust under the day of judgment to be punished. What did it say up there in verse 1? Bring upon themselves swift destruction. Verse 3, their damnation slumbereth not. Okay. The Lord has reserved them under the day of judgment to be punished. Verse 10, but chiefly them that walk after the flesh in the lust of uncleanness and despise government. That doesn't mean you have to go along with whatever the government, as in federal government, state government, that's, it's not talking about that. Government is you're, you're telling yourself, okay, I shouldn't do this and I shouldn't do that. You're governing your life and saying, there are certain things that I'm not going to do because it's wrong, it's sinful. These people, them that walk after the flesh in the lust of uncleanness, they do whatever their flesh does, wants to do the lasciviousness that we read about in the book of Jude and they despise government they can't stand people saying you need to give up those video games you need to quit smoking cigarettes you need to quit your drinking alcohol getting drunk and things with it you need to stop this you need to stop that they can't stand that they despise government presumptuous are they self-willed they're not afraid to speak evil of dignities Hey, Brother Brian, he's been a great preacher. He's changed my life. He's done some good things. Oh, wait, he just kicked my sin. Okay, he's this, he's that. I'm going to attack him. He's a hypocrite. He's a liar. He's terrible. He's a false prophet. He's. I was blessed at one point in time, and now I'm hated. Now I'm despised. Why? Because the Lord helped me to kick their sin, which we'll see here in a little bit. Verse 11. 
Whereas angels, which are greater in power and might, bring not railing accusation against them before the Lord. But these, as natural brute beasts, may to be taken and destroyed. Speak evil of the things that they understand not, and shall utterly perish in their own corruption. Hey, I don't think you have a right down there to, to, to talk against my rock music and my drugs and my alcohol and my name it, porn viewing, uh, whatever. You're going to perish in your own corruption. Okay? Um, the end of those things is, is death. And again, I, I have a lot of experience with sin. All right? Uh, I'm not a, a young little novice that just runs my mouth and I don't I can't say hey I can prove that the sin over years and years leads to negative causes or leads to negative effects I should say not causes effects I know I've been there listen to the voice of experience young people out there get away from video games get away from junk food get away from rock music get away from drinking alcohol get away from cigarettes get away from those things bad for you don't be a brute beast some dumb animal you say hey, hey hey get away from that don't don't roll in that poop over there or whatever else or don't don't sniff that don't don't, don't put that in your mouth dog stop that and the dog just runs off and does its own thing it's a brute beast verse 13 and shall receive the reward of unrighteousness the wages of sin is death it's your reward. You mess with sin. You 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 know deserve what's coming. Your damnation is just. As they that count it pleasure to ride in the daytime, spots they are and blemishes, sporting themselves with their own deceivings while they feast with you. But find it interesting though, it's a, to riot in the daytime. <laughs> no, no modern application there at all. You know, there's no rioting in the daytime now. You know? You know, they I know I know they prefer day you know nighttime, the you know, Black Lives Matter and Antifa and all this stuff, you know. But but look at the the second part of the verse thirteen there. Spots they are and blemishes. I thought the bride of Christ is supposed to be holy, a chaste virgin without spot or wrinkle or any such thing. We're not supposed to have spots, we're not supposed to have blemishes on our record and sin that people know about. Spots they are in blemishes. Sporting themselves with their own deceivings. They make a mock at sin. They think it's funny. And what are they doing? While they feast with you. Hey, let's get together for this Bible study. You're probably some of them over here in the uh, comment thing. Some of you probably are very wicked. Can't speak for all of you. But uh, if there's wickedness, I pray the Lord's convicting you of it right now. And that you want to get it out of your life. But some of you probably sitting there laughing at me, smoking your cigarette or got your beer there or whatever else, you know, drinking it up, boozing it up, just got done playing video games. Maybe you're playing video games right now. Maybe you got some Playboy magazines or whatever else over there. Or you have some, I know that's old technology now, I guess, you know, printed, you know, magazines. Maybe you got a website bookmarked or something where you can go look at adult videos. Mess around in sin, sporting yourself while you feast with the brethren here. My conscience doesn't convict me. Oh, then they are such an idiot. Hey, such a hypocrite. Oh, a little holier than thou. You know, always love the smoke when I get it out the nose. It always looks so spiritual, you know. Yeah. Well, let's continue. Um, Verse 14, having eyes full of adultery. Looking and lusting on a woman is adultery. Having eyes full of adultery and that cannot cease from sin. I don't want to quit my sin. I'm under grace, man. I enjoy my salvation. I'm enjoying my life. I, I, I cannot cease from sin. And what do they do? Beguiling unstable souls. Some newly saved young man, young woman, or whatever else, and and these people will beguile you. Yeah, I mean, hey, uh, you think Denlinger's without sin? Oh, come on, he's Lordship Salvationist after all. 
you know, you need to listen to this. And let, let me see this. I cut his videos up and I found a mistake that he made seven years ago. And, and I took this little part of this video and I took that little part of that video and I merged them together into my own little video to prove that he's false and you can just deny everything he's ever said. So get that conviction of your sin. Come on, man. Beguiling unstable souls. And heart they have exercised with covetous practices. They want to draw you in with feigned words. Words that they don't really mean. In other words, they're fake. Cursed children. Cursed. Under God's curse. Which have forsaken the right way and are gone astray. Following the way of Balaam, the son of Bosor, who loved the wages of unrighteousness. You'll be a lot better off in this world if you follow sin, brethren. A lot better off. You start to live the sanctified, holy life of a Christian. Doesn't look good for you. Um, people start to make fun of you. You might get in trouble. Yeah. Yeah. Verse 16, but was rebuked for his iniquity, the dumb ass speaking with man's voice, forbade the madness of the prophet. Ass there being a donkey. Okay, the Bible word for donkey. It was dumb, it couldn't speak, but yet God spoke through it. Verse 17, these are wells without water. They pretend that they know the Bible, they might be able to memorize some things, but it's not really, you know, out of the abundance, you know, my word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. What's the point of, of learning scripture if you're living a life of sin? You're just trying to deceive people. They're wells without water, clouds that are carried with a tempest, to whom the mist of darkness is reserved forever. Their damnation slumbereth not. God's going to get them. For when they speak great swelling words of vanity, they allure through the lust of the flesh, through much wantonness. Those that were clean escape from them who live in error. You get you get the, around the Lord, you start to hear some things, you know, some people, and I, I want to find religion, you know, I want this relationship, I want to be a Christian. And they start to get away, and they start to get away from the lost world, and the lost world comes along with their feigned words, and they say, well, come on back. Why don't you come to church? We have some great programs for you. We're going to go on retreats, couples retreats, singles meetings, you know, and they draw you back in and they get you messed up. Verse 19. Here's a good one. While they promise them liberty, they themselves are the servants of corruption for of whom a man is overcome of the same as he brought in bondage. You know, the Bible says we're not to judge until we get the beam out of our own eye and then you can see clearly to judge a brother or a sister hmm and yet you see this whole thing of these people and they'll say you're judging me how dare you i it's okay if i do this and if i do that and whatever else and you just and, and why because they themselves are just buried in this whole thing there's an old saying misery loves company yeah, sinners love company too. And they'll get you so pulled away and so drawn away. And next thing you know, you're putting your Bible down and you're, you're messing around and stuff. And they say, oh, you're trying to get rid of cigarettes? Yeah, I'm too. Uh, come on. Looking over at my other screen here. Come on here. I can see my screen locked up.
this thing going to come back on here or what? What's going on? I guess I'm just locked up here. I don't know what's going on. Okay. All right, I guess I guess we're back here. Okay, hopefully we're back. I think I'm back here again. I'm just looking at my other screen. I have my other screen up here. Um, okay, I saw the thing was buffering and buffering and buffering and stuff there. So that our internet connections here is not very good. But let's get back to the text. Um, verse 19. While they promised them liberty, they themselves are the servants of corruption. For of whom a man is overcome, of the same as he brought in bondage. Um, yeah, you know, I'm not even sure where I'm at here right now. Uh, I'm looking at my screen over here, and it's way behind where I'm talking right now. But um, yeah, so but the people they say. But, you know, they'll promise you liberty. They'll promise you. Uh, it's it's just a liberty issue. It's you know you can you can do all this wicked sin. The, the, you know, you can live in sin. The grace of God is there, and whatever else you have liberty. Um, but they themselves are the servants of corruption. You'll see that thing there. Um, verse twenty. For if there if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled therein and overcome. The latter end is worse with them than the beginning. I have preached on that verse 20 there for a very long time. And verse 20, uh, it does not say that they got saved and then they lost it. Verse 20 says, if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of it's a head knowledge. They believe the facts of the gospel. That's what's going on there. So you have to be careful with that whole thing. These people that just tell you just to believe in your, in your mind, just believe the facts of the gospel and you can go on living in sin. Um, that is a bad, bad problem. Verse 21, for it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than after they have known it to turn from the holy commandment delivered unto them. But it has happened unto them according to the true proverb. The dog is turned to his own vomit again, and the sow that was washed to her wallowing in the mire. But right there you have it. So, I wasn't off at all. I don't know what in the world, you know, is going on here. So, Uh, video stuff, technology things, I don't know. But finally, we will go to the last place. Um, stream never froze. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Finally, let's go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 1 through 8. Yeah, I guess my playback, um, my playback must have, uh, 
slowed down over on this side. I don't know. I got double monitors and I'm looking at this side. And now I, I refreshed my page and it looks fine again. So I don't know. First Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 1 through 8. Uh, this is where we'll conclude our study. First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 1. Furthermore, then we beseech you, brethren, and exhort you by the Lord Jesus, that as ye have received of us how ye ought to walk and to please God, so ye would abound more and more. Oh, no, less and less. You get, you just get to a point where, you know, you enjoy your salvation and you can just mess around and sin. But no, more and more sanctification, more and more and more. Uh, Lord, convict me more sin. Lord, show me more truth. Give me more chances to witness for you. Give me more chances to stick my neck out there and look like a fool for you. More and more. We're to abound more and more. Verse 2, for we know, for you know what commandments we gave you by the Lord Jesus. Commandments. Oh, I'm so glad we don't have to live with the Ten Commandments anymore. Well, okay, but, uh, you know, as far as the law there, but uh, uh, there's a lot more commandments in the New Testament. There's a whole lot of commandments in this New Testament. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. There's two commandments in just 2 Timothy 2.15. Two commandments, study and rightly divide. Commandments, well, that's just your opinion. No, it comes from the word of God. You know what commandments we gave you by the Lord Jesus. You know, the Bible says, awake to righteousness and sin not. In the Pauline epistles, that's a command from the Lord Jesus. Verse 3, for this is the will of God, even your sanctification. That ye should abstain from fornication. Abstain from fornication. Abstain from drunkenness. Abstain from covetousness. Abstain from idolatry. Abstain from... Go down through the list. You fill in your own sin. The thing that you're struggling with. Abstain. Abstinence. Why? Or at war. You're down in the trenches. Bullets are flying over your head artillery hitting all around you and everything else you know I think I want to go for a walk maybe I'll just kind of you know get up out of the trench here and, and just walk out through the battle zone and just you know whistle a tune abstain from that hey let's let's sit down and play video games that'd be fun that's kind of take my mind off this war stuff that's fighting all the time abstain Hey, uh, I think I'm just going to spend three days eating candy bars. Maybe I'll just get drunk out of my mind. Uh, no, abstain. You see? This life is about war, brethren. We're fighting the world, the flesh, and the devil. Abstain. Abstinence. The Christian life is a life of sanctification. You say, brother, I'm struggling. Good. Good. That proves that you're saved if you're struggling with sin. If you're defending sin, then you're out of fellowship with God at best and lost at worst. Verse 4, that every one of you should know how to possess his vessel in sanctification and honor. Possess your vessel. Your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost. What's that temple look like inside? Is it holy? What kind of music is playing inside that temple? Hmm. Verse 5. Not in the lust of concupiscence, even as the Gentiles which know not God. You're not supposed to be like the lost world. You're supposed to be different than them. Verse 6. That no man go beyond and defraud his brother in any matter, because that the Lord is the avenger of all such. As we also have forewarned you and testified. Don't think for a minute, hey, I'm saved. I'm, I'm under grace. You know, I can sin and whatever else and think God will judge you. God will chasten you. Uh, you need to fear God. Verse 7, for God hath not called us unto uncleanness, but unto holiness. God expects you to have his standards of holiness. 
Be ye holy, for I am holy, God says to you. Hmm. Verse 8, He therefore that despiseth, despiseth not man, but God, who, also, who hath also given us unto us his Holy Spirit. If God's Holy Spirit is in you, then his Holy Spirit is what's convicting you. I'm just a messenger of the Lord. I'm just a servant of the Lord. You're not really getting mad at me. You're getting mad at the Lord. The people that come out and attack me and, and everything else, and oh, Denley is such a legalist, and he's backloading work salvation, and he's lordship salvation, and all this other stuff. They're not really mad at me. They don't really hate me. I'm just the messenger. That's all I am. The reality is, they hate God. That's what's really going on. So that's going to be it for this study. I need to just needed to clarify that whole thing. Um, I understand. I'm not going to judge you if you are struggling with sin. If you are really struggling and you're saying, oh, I can't believe I fell for this again. The, the things that I'm doing, I'm ashamed of this. Oh, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Oh, I know that in me, my, that is in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. Oh, I'm sorry, Lord. Oh, I will be the most gentle, loving brother to you, sister, brother out there. I will, I will weep with you. I know what it's like to struggle with sin. I get it. But if you come along and you start to defend your sin and you start to say, you know, you really have no right. Who are you? And you start to do this whole thing that I've gone through for so long. Sorry. If I don't see chastening in your life, you're lost. And I'm going to treat you like you're lost. And I'm going to fight against you. Period. So that's going to be it. Um, we'll close here with a word of prayer and then we'll do some question and answers for the next probably till noon or so, about 45 minutes. So let's close with a word of prayer. Um, dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I do pray that uh, you would help all of us to desire that life of sanctification, that life of separation uh, from this lost world that we wouldn't want to fit in with them that we would desire to look different and to get desire to get closer to you and that uh, if we get around people that profess to be christians and we see them defending sin and get angry when their sins are kicked and i pray lord that we would get away from them. your word says evil communications corrupt good matters i just really do pray lord that you would help us all to just stand firm and uh, not back down on the truth and uh just keep all of us in your word. Keep us safe, Lord. The things are really getting just crazy down here on this earth. Help us to know how to fight the devil's system so that people can see that you can fight it. Many people that might not get saved, that they would, uh, maybe after we get caught up, that they would refuse to take the mark of the beast because of our example of nonconformity. I just pray, Lord, that you would give us strength for these difficult times. And I ask it all in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Okay, we are ready now. Um, so, we can do some question and answers type of thing here. Brian, what do you think of Amir Sarfati? Uh, for some reason, no one wants to expose him, probably because he's a Jew converted to Jesus. Not. God bless you. Don't know anything about him. I've never heard of him. Um, oops. Excuse me. <laughs> I went to click on one of the... Oh, question. Can you make a sermon about fear? Um, I don't know. Maybe I could do that eventually. Question, does the Bible teach the earth is flat? Well, that's a matter of opinion. Um, some people get into that whole thing. I don't. Um, I think it's a uh, diverse and strange doctrine that people can get into. Um, and I don't mess with it. You know, there's some people that want to use that as their main platform to fight. 
about and whatever else and stuff. And, and I mean, I mean, people have made it a salvation issue. I think it's just uh, whatever. I'm not going to waste time on it. Um, do you think if someone is struggling with drug addiction, rehab is a good place for them? No, not at all. Rehab is is a uh, secular, worldly thing um, that you know that it's basically psychiatry that you get into and sitting around talking about stuff and whatever else. You need to if you're struggling with drug addiction, you need to get into natural health. Natural health, drug addiction. If you watch the study I did with Dr. Robert Wilner, drug addiction will dis will destroy your immune system, and that's why they can claim that you have AIDS, <laughs> and it'll tear down your immune system, and you'll start to get more and more sick. You need to build up your immune system, and you'll get to a point praying and saying, "Lord, help me to get away from these drugs," and the Lord will give you victory over that. Um, So when we we're supposed to be following along in the word of God, most are spamming the chat. We must, we pray and most continue to spam. Yeah. Yeah. Um, crept in unawares, sporting themselves with their own deceivings. Yeah. You know. Um, hey, Brian, have you done an expository on Isaiah? It's a tough read. Um, no, I haven't. Actually, you know a guy, Mike Colston, that did a uh, wrote a book called Isaiah, the little the Bible within the Bible. It relates it to uh, each chapter is kind of relates to like the first chapter of Isaiah relates to the book of Genesis, and it's a really interesting book. But no, I haven't done any expository things on Isaiah. Um, And there's a bunch of stuff that's just popping up here. Um, uh, sorry I'm late, brother. I'm going to rewatch when it uploads. Could I ask for prayer for my flesh? We actually did pray for it at the beginning. So, already done. Um, is chastening always physical? Very good question. Uh, no, there's there's sometimes the Lord will chasten you. There are spiritual things that will happen. You will you will get kind of you'll feel really much out of fellowship with the Lord. You'll just feel just lower than dirt. You know, yeah, there can be some spiritual chastening. Um, that's a very good question. What do you hate about the lost world? Uh, how much time do we have? <laughs> um, I hate the corruption. I hate the love of money being the root of all evil. Um, I hate what people, how people don't care about God's creation. Um, I hate people thinking that they're wealthy when really their wealth is just artificial debt. Uh, I hate new virgins. I hate what the Vatican does and how they cover up for child molesters. I could go on and on. Good question. Oh, I wanted to get the um, Brian, something I've wondered about. Uh, never found an answer. Well, would your dead pets be with someone saved in heaven since animals have no soul? I don't believe that they will. Um, let me give you a verse of scripture on that. Uh, it's in Ecclesiastes. Um, look it up quick here. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 21. Who knoweth the spirit of man that goeth upward and the spirit of the beast that goeth downward to the earth? Um, so, you know, uh, verse 19, two verses up. For one that, for that which befalleth the sons of men befalleth beasts, even one thing befalleth them, as the one dieth, so dieth the other. Yea, they have all one breath, so that a man hath no preeminence above a beast, for all is vanity. 
all go into one place, all <clears throat> are of the dust, and all turn to dust again. So everybody dies, you decompose. But it says that the spirit of the beast that goeth downward to the earth, and the spirit of the man that goeth upward. So I don't believe, you know, again, heaven is not a place where all of our favorite things from the earth um, will be there waiting for us. That's not heaven. Heaven is a place where we worship Jesus Christ. So, and if you're saved, you'll understand that. And you'll say, man, I can't wait to get there and actually meet him face to face and be with all my brethren. And, I, you know, I'm looking forward to meeting Paul. That's, that's you know, one of my favorite men in the Bible. and Just can't wait. Um, I've seen your C.S. Lewis videos. What is your greatest claim that he was not a Christian? I've seen John Todd's and other videos claiming he was an occultist. Pastors revere or despise him. Um, that's a that's there's a lot to that. Um, but I would just simply say the fact that he was hanging out with um, at pubs and things and bars and see uh, John Ronald Rule Tolkien talked to him one time about how he got to the one pub. I forget what the name of it was where they hung out and he said that you know that. C.S. Lewis was ensconced, you know, he was drunk, essentially, um, which, okay, you know, some guy is struggling or whatever else, but again, I don't think that there was a struggle there. And C.S. Lewis's writings, he actually would say about, he's not sure if he's going to have to go through uh, purgatory, and I don't really know if I'm going to make it, and, and whatever. He had no assurance of salvation. So, and there was a whole lot of other issues, things that he was involved with. So, that's why I would say, no, I don't think he was a saved man. Um, question: With Gail Rippling or Yoking Ken Hoven, are you or will using her books still worth using? Uh, I don't know what to think about Gail Rippling, quite frankly. Um, she's been working with guys from Harvard and, and stuff like this. And he, you know. Okay, I'm gonna have to go down here to the bottom. I'm, there's a lot of stuff that's come up. Um, is it a sin to put pineapple on pizza? No, I don't think so. I don't really know what the point of that one was. <clears throat> Oop. Went past it. <laughs> Comments are popping up. Question: What are what are your thoughts on divorce and remarriage? Um, have a study on it if you want to get into all the scriptures, but uh, the cause for divorce is if you're married to somebody and they go out and, and you know, the Lord Jesus Christ talked about it. He said, if you know, not to put away your wife, except it be for fornication. Somebody goes out and commits fornication. The husband leaves the wife, cheats on her. He's joined his body to another woman and has effectively caused a break in that combining there of, of husband and wife, the one flesh. He just joined his flesh to somebody else. You can divorce him. And remarriage, in context of 1 Corinthians chapter 7, you can find it there. Um, and if you're married, if you get married as a lost person and your husband or wife, whatever else, uh, never gets saved, you get saved and they don't get saved and they don't want anything to do with the Lord and you're fighting all the time, you can get divorced and remarried as well. So, uh Question, Galatians 5 talks about the struggles of the flesh and the spirit, but will God severely chastise a person for repeating the same sin? Good video, by the way. God bless. Yes, God will. Um, to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. When the Lord convicts you of a certain thing um, and you keep messing with it, it just get, it'll just it get worse and worse and worse. And you'll feel more out of fellowship. You'll be more ashamed. Again, speaking from experience, um, yeah, the punishment will get worse. Um, you know, when you're a parent, you will deal with that with your son or your daughter. I deal with it with my son. You know, it starts out in the son. I don't want you to do that. Okay, dad doesn't want you to touch that. I don't want you to do, you know, you're gentle. The next time, uh, son, didn't I tell you to not do that? Didn't I say don't touch that? No, the next time, okay, son, you touched it. 
when you get punished, the next time, you know, it just gets worse and worse. So very much the same way with a Christian. Um, and if you have a question, by the way, the best thing to do is write question first and then the thing like you see here. Question, conditional security heretics claim that the sealing of the Holy Spirit can be broken and you can still lose your salvation. What would be a good verse to use against them? Um, John, uh, or it says in John, what is it, 10? Um, where it says about no man can pluck them out of my hand. Uh, let me get you the exact verse on that. I think it's in John 10. Yeah, John John 10, verse 28. And I gave unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. Um, and then it goes on to say, no man shall pluck them out of the Father's hand as well. The next verse, uh, Jesus and the Father are one and the same being. So, um, if you can't pluck yourself, out of the hand of the Father, the Lord, um, you're not going to be able to unseal the Holy Spirit of promise. That's crazy. Somebody thinks that they're better than the Lord or something. Um, so, I have two teen daughters, 12 and 13. What is your advice? Puberty is not easy at all. God bless. Um, get them into doing things with their hands in, in terms of uh, knitting, crocheting, uh, craft types of things like that. Um, those are things that, that are good talents to develop. Um, have them help out around the house. Um, watch out uh, who they hang out with. Do not let them hang out with lost uh, kids of their same age. Terrible idea. Um, if they're in public school, get them out of public school, home school. Um, don't let them mess around with the wrong kind of music. That's another thing I've seen mess up young girls, really mess them up. Um, keep them away from fashion type of stuff. Um, there's a lot of beauty in, in being a lady, wearing dresses and things. Um, sanctification, keep them away from the world. That's the best thing I can say. Um, Question, can I buy a Bible from you, Brian? Well, I don't know why you'd want to buy one from me. I'm not really, a, I don't have a whole lot of them in terms of um, that I would sell or whatever else. Uh, you know, I can send you one or whatever else if you need one. But, you know, go to lo local church Bible publishers. They would have, you know, good ones, nice affordable ones. Um, LocalChurchBiblePublishers.com or Church Bible Publishers is another one that you can use. They're, they're very affordable and they're extremely high quality. I recommend them. Uh, yeah, and I just I want to make a point here. Um, Brian answered the flat earth question. No more spamming the topic. Yeah, um, that, it's the thing with the flat earth deal. Okay, somebody wants to get into that. They want to study it, want to look at it. Whatever, that's your deal, fine. But I've seen people, when they get messed up on this flat earth thing, it's just everything's about flat earth. Everything has to tie back to flat earth. There's a problem there. Um, in Romans 11, 28, is the election Israel or save Christians? I'm confused on this. Let me go there quick. Eleven twenty-eight. As concerning the, the gospel, they are enemies for your sakes, but as touching the election, they are beloved for the Father's sakes. Well, then that would be Israel. God has plans for them in the future. Question, do I have to follow the requirements of a bishop, 1 Timothy 3, to lead a small Bible study of men? I am also the same age as the men. Bible study top would be topics and compare it to Scripture. No, absolutely not. You can, you know, an elder, or excuse me, a bishop in First Timothy chapter three. That's when you're dealing with a, a larger group of saved, you know, brethren. It's not just a small little Bible study or something like that. You know, they were dealing with thousands of people getting genuinely born again, and so they had to appoint bishops, older men, and things like that. Um, 
Um, question, where did Old Testament saints go when they died before the existence of the law? And did Abraham's bosom exist before Abraham? Uh, yeah, they did go down to Abraham's bosom, I believe that. And yes, it would have existed before Abraham. Just to be quick with that. Um, should we fight against Black Lives Matter? If yes, how? Uh, well, Black Lives Matter is a communist um, organization, essentially. Um, it's it's all about, you know, we sh we need to go after white people for the, the white privilege thing. And it, it's, it's a racist organization, but they use they use tactics of guerrilla warfare types of things where they go in and they, they attack cities and they tear down things. And they, you know, it's it's you know, it's something that I'm hoping it doesn't get to a, a physical fighting confrontation type of deal. But I don't see it as going any other way than that. Um but the, the whole Black Lives Matter thing, just to, you know, get people to realize, you know, what's coming, um, that this thing is leading to a race war. You know, I try to warn black people about that and just say, you know, they're, this is being used by the media to tick off the alt-right movement. So they're going to come in and destroy the left. And that's what's going to go on. And, it, and of course, the biggest thing, when you look at who's really behind the whole deal, it goes back to the Vatican. And the Catholic Church, and I know I say that people, what you know, whatever. It, it ties back. Again, I've talked about that on other videos without going into a big rant here, but um, witnessing the people, getting people saved, telling people, and giving people prophecy for the future. There's a race war that's coming, and it's going to be bad. So. Question off topic, but have you heard about COVID pass? It'll use blood tests to let you through the air in airports. If not, look it up. It's disturbing. Thanks for your time. Yeah, they'll they'll do that type of thing. You get the vaccine, you get a COVID pass, you do this, you do that, and then you can go on. You know, it's mark of the beast stuff. They're they're preparing for the mark of the beast by implementing it slowly through this mask wearing and all the other stuff that they're doing. Um, all right. Um, hi, Brian. Question. Do you hear a song, What's Wrong with the Old Black Book? Um, I don't know if I have or not. That kind of sounds familiar, uh, but I'm not sure if I have. Oh, there's one. Question, I have a friend who owns a cabin and is willing to rent to own the cabin. Should I move there so I can be more self-sufficient, especially with what's going on? Well, you can. I would I would advise against the thing of being in debt. Um, I understand the rent to own thing, you know. Yeah, I get it. Uh, but, yeah, I would say if you can get out of the city, you need to do it soon because it's going to get bad. Question, does a wife have some grounds for divorce according to the scripture if a husband does not want to get saved? Yes. Yes. I'll give you the scripture on that. Um, 1 Corinthians chapter 7. Paul and epistles written to Christians, not Old Testament, some kind of thing or whatever. Uh, no, it's written to Christians. Um, 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 12. But to the rest speak I, not the Lord. If any brother hath a wife that believeth not, and she be pleased to dwell with him, let him not put her away. And a woman which hath an husband that believeth not, and if he be pleased to dwell with her, let her not leave him. Okay, so if you're getting along, okay, you can you can stay with each other. Um, verse 14, for the unbelieving husband is, is sanctified by the wife, and the unbelieving wife is sanctified by the husband. Else were your children unclean, but now are they holy. Verse 15, but if the unbelieving depart, let him depart. A brother or a sister is not under bondage in such cases, but God hath called us to peace. So there you go. Um, if the unbelieving depart, let him depart. God has called us to peace. We're supposed to have peace. So.
Hopefully everybody can still see me here. My computer's acting up again. Okay. Uh, what books can I recommend? Oh boy, that'd be a very long list. <laughs> um, you know, um, there's some good books out there with you know, you know, history of different uh, great Christians down through the years. You can learn some good stuff there. Uh, boy, I don't, I don't have them here with me right now. This wall here is eventually going to be uh, my bookshelf. We've been having some uh, issues um, with uh, vehicles and things here, so we're having to deal with some things. Um, but I don't know if I should talk about the vehicle issue or not. But uh, we'll just, just pray for us because we have. Kind of in a bad situation right now because I drive old junkers. <laughs> I don't drive nice new vehicles. Don't like the new vehicles. So, but um, we we have our the one vehicle is too rusted now to inspect, so that one's out. Um, and then another one, I'm not sure if it's going to pass inspection. Another one, it was been, it's been sitting for a while. I'm trying to get it going again. So. Trying to find the right, uh, you know, find the right vehicle and everything else. And because we don't have the big drive anymore, we're just a few minutes away from the house. So um, that's been really consuming a lot of my time. And, and that's been irritating because I don't want to covet. I don't, I'm not trying to, you know, I'm trying to research what would be the perfect vehicle for us. And so. That's why I don't have my books and why I don't have a lot of other things up right now. But there's going to be a lot of things in here so I can answer your questions better in the future about which books do I recommend. So, question, do you know of any natural remedy to get rid of eye floaters? The little stuff that's in your eye, uh, get it out of there. I think I heard the one time it was a zinc issue kind of a zinc deficiency but I'm not sure on that you, you know look it up uh, Dr. Eric Berg I think has a good video on that if I remember correctly uh, will you be doing more cooking videos more people may need to learn how to cook over open fire in the future well I don't really cook over open fire very much um, we have a wood cook stove so uh, at our property so I don't know I, I might that's something I, I like to do but we're not sure yet. Um, question. I'm planning to cash out 401k and buy a travel trailer to go mobile. Family spread out, including grandchildren. I'm in Vegas and it's bad here. Yeah. Yeah. Your retirement stuff and all that other investments are really bad right now. Very volatile. Um, you know, I'm going to be saying more stuff about econ economic type of stuff in the future because that's just, there's so much stuff going on with the economy and it does relate to scripture the Bible does say it a lot about gold and silver and, and whatever else the mark of the beast coming so it is a big issue and you know people um, people put so much stock in money and, and everything and, and it's just not good for the future so yeah if you're in the city get out of the city and I would say you know buying a motor home or whatever else or a travel trailer Things like that would be a good idea. And go mo mobile if you have to. Question, do you know the time in history when the Catholic Church publicly condemned the King James Bible or put people to death for having a King James Bible? Well, that would probably be the Council of Trent was when they really condemned a lot of books. Uh, I have a copy of the Council of Trent. Not here right now, unfortunately. But I have it in my real Bible 
version issue exposed video um, where they started to go after books. I think it was shortly before uh, the time of the King James Bible because they condemned Luther and a bunch of others. Um, so. Question, is it sinful to wear these masks to enter a store, for example? Um, well, you know, it, it, I'm not going to I'm not going to go after somebody because they, they did it a, t a couple times or whatever else. But because, you, you know, you get scared into it, you do something stupid and you put a mask on. But you know, and I know people say, oh, it's the law and whatever else. But brethren, you're you're showing that you don't really trust God when you do that. And that you're submitting to the the a stupid bunch of nonsense that the government's coming out with. Um, and if you continue to go along with the face mask thing, and the next step is going to just be worse. And you know we have a responsibility to fight against evil and wickedness. So that's what I have to say about that. Um, question: What do you think of the coin shortage that is going on now? Couldn't get changed for a dollar at the gas station every day. One step closer to cashless society. Well, that's ultimately it. And they'll, of course, use it to eventually go after gold and silver and copper coins. But I've heard that there are certain areas where they're saying it's not true. You know, I haven't seen any of it in the area here. There's been no coin shortages here. So, again, they're they're selectively hitting certain areas with the coronavirus. It's worse in certain cities and the coin shortage and whatever else. So, um Question, do you ever get angry with God? Uh, I do sometimes. Is it normal to express your feelings to the Lord or should we stuff it down? Well, it's it's kind of a foolish thing to get angry with God. I have in the past, but it's not really that smart of a thing to do to get mad at the Lord. Um, you just say, Lord, I'm sorry. I, I shouldn't be thinking this way. And I'm sorry. I'm angry at you. And, I, and it's just me and my rebellion, self-pity and my pride. And, you know. And you confess your, your sins to the Lord and just say, Lord, I'm sorry. You know, I shouldn't have gotten mad at you. It's not, I wouldn't say it's a sin to get angry at the Lord about something that you don't understand. But it's a sin if you continue it and you don't ask for the Lord's forgiveness. I live on a boat. You can also do that. Yeah, that's another possibility. If you're near a lake or whatever else, you can live on a boat. In a climate, you know, a good climate. <laughs> you don't want to live on a boat here in northern Maine. It'd be a bad idea. Um, although you could walk to your boat in the winter. You know, just your boat's probably going to get smashed when the ice stall happens in the spring. So... All right. Uh, it's Chris and Evie. Hi. Question. You mentioned Gail Ripplinger. I have her new book at home. New, new Bible versions updated. I sent this to you too. Can we still count on her? Um, the research, yeah, I would say, but I don't know where it's going to go. Um, you know, just, just keep in mind if anybody comes out and turns against the Word of God and starts to, to go along with the, whatever the bad system is in the future. You don't say, well, they're doing it, so I'll do it too, you know. Um, so, you know, her research on the King James issue is good, but I don't know where things are going right now with her. So just be careful. Um, question, is it correct to say that if it is the will of God that some got get coronavirus and that if they get it, they would have got it no matter what, no matter how much they wore masks or anything? Well, God can certainly punish people with viruses or with whatever else, but you know the the science behind it is false. So um, I don't really think that anybody is getting this coronavirus thing honestly. I think that if you study the whole 
you know, true thing about germ theory. I think that germs and viruses and bacteria are just part of our system. And, you know, the, the HIV thing was just, there are some people that have it and they, it never is a problem because their immune systems are so strong. It's, it's, you know, you know, you have this virus, the H TL three virus or whatever known as HIV. And, you know, you'll die of, you know, autoimmune deficiency syndrome. Um, well, that's kind of an issue. They're all they're saying is, you know, it's, it's, it's deception. You're dying because you're, you have immune deficiency. Well, if you have, you know, a virus, you know, that's not really the problem. It's like saying, Hey, you have bacteria in your stomach. Oh, I do. Oh no, I should probably, you know, swallow some antibacterial soap or something. No, you need bacteria in your stomach. And they, you take antibiotics to kill bad bacteria and it kills everything. It kills all the bacteria. That's a bad idea. Okay. Don't take antibiotics. And we literally, I'm going to be coming out with a video on this. We literally bought some shredded cheese from the grocery store locally here. And it has antibiotics in it. Pharmaceutical antibiotics. My wife's looking at it last night. We're eating supper and she looks at it and she says, what is this? She said, this sounds pharmaceutical. So let me go in and I'm going to look it up on PubChem and, you know, this website, medical website. And she's looked it up in some of her medical books and things too. <laughs> it's a pharmaceutical antibiotic in cheese, shredded cheese. And I think, oh, you got to be kidding me. So it's all over the place. Um, but, okay, question. What do you know about Mary, mother of Jesus after the crucifixion? Well, she was a good woman. She was with the early Christians and, um, and she died and she's in heaven. I'll get to meet her someday. You know, it'd be nice to say, hi, Mary, you know, um, it's not going to be, she's not going to be up there on a throne or whatever else. You know, she's not the queen of heaven. So, and it's interesting. Um, very, very interesting thing. Uh, I actually have the, Jesuit Dewey Reams Bible, the original, you know, the way it was would have been written in uh, 1610. Um, and they actually say in the book of Acts, they go into this whole big thing about how Mary died and that they were this, there was a big funeral that they had for all the apostles were there and everything else. See, the thing of the assumption of Mary, her being called up to heaven, wasn't even taught until, you know, the 1800s sometime. I don't remember the exact year. And then the Immaculate. Um, conception wasn't taught until the 20th century. So Catholics and Mary, it's kind of ridiculous. Um, Hi, Brian. Do you think you should learn to cut your own hair? You have to wear a mask at the salon. Do I think that you should learn to cut your own hair? Yes. If you're a man, it's pretty easy. You just get a little clipper with the different types of size combs on it. And you just, that's what I do. I've been doing that for years. Um, if you're a woman, well, I think there's, you know, ways that you can cut your hair too. I think it'd be a good idea. You know, again, it, a very important thing for the future is self-sufficiency. Um, learning how to get food on your own and, and whatever else. I mean, it's, it's really so pathetic when you think about it how that uh, there's so much that people could do in the past and we can't do it anymore. And it, you just think, are we really this pathetic that, I mean, 100 years ago, a lot of people didn't have electricity or running water in their homes. Now we can't live without it. You know, my wife and I were talking about this, you know, yesterday, I think it was, we were driving and I said, you know, we're, we're in such a pathetic state as people um, that, Literally, somebody who, uh, you know, is overweight or whatever, you could actually live longer as an overweight person than you could if the electric went out. So if you run out of food, you could actually live longer because you have so much in fat reserve, a lot of Americans. But if the power went out, they'd die in a few days. You know, you might last for a week or two or a month or something maybe if you don't have much food. But if the power goes out, the electricity goes out, you're dead in a few days. 
it's just really bad. So, um, yeah. Um, question, does God judge our physical appearance such as our features? Um, well, that depends on if you're changing, you know, how God created you. I would say yes. At that point in time, God would judge you for that. You get a lot of piercings and a lot of tattoos and whatever else you're changing how God made you. Brian, is it okay to pray for Mary? Uh, why? What would be the point of praying for Mary? Why not pray for James or John or Paul or Peter or um, Dwight Lyman Moody or, or you know any other saint that went to heaven? There's no point in praying for Mary or to Mary. She was a saved uh, woman, and uh, that's it. Just seeing if I missed anything up here. Question, is it sinful to file for bankruptcy? Let me give you the verse. Psalm 37, verse 21. The wicked borroweth and payeth not again, but the righteous showeth mercy and giveth. Yes, it is a sin to file for bankruptcy. If you got yourself into debt, then you need to pay your way out of it. Simple. Question, how do you shop if they require a mask? Any advice would be appreciated. Well, there's a lot of different ways that you can say that. Use it as an opportunity to witness to them. Say, I can't wear the mask. That's what I just say. I've, I've only been confronted one time. And uh, I just they said, you need to have a mask on. I said, I can't. And walked right in. And, you know, they didn't stop me or whatever else. Um, you can tell them that you have a medical exemption, um, you know, that your brain works and theirs doesn't. That's my med medical exemption. <laughs> um, but you can just simply say it, it goes against my rights as a Christian. Uh, what I believe, what the Bible teaches, you know, um, that's, you know, I think it'd be good um, to just, you know, write down some verses of scripture or something that, that say that, you know, that God is, is there and he's your protector. So, so in here, if there's anything I'm missing, missing. Um, online shopping seems like a good idea rather than evade their wicked face mask laws. Yeah, you can do that. That's another way to do it. You know, worst case scenario. Ah. Um, opinion on Rust is dark. <clears throat> I haven't listened to the guy in a long time. I heard a thing one or twice of his. He's using new versions. Holy Spirit you know, casting out devils, fighting the satanic hosts and everything else, and he uses new versions. Um, yeah, not being really led of the spirit there. Um, question, how can you deal with airlines requiring masks if you wanted to fly? I haven't flied, I haven't flown any, flied? <laughs> I haven't flown anywhere since all the TSA stuff came out years and years ago. I'll drive, and if I can't get there by driving, I won't go. So, Yeah. Question, how much of Old Testament should we follow, abide to? Good question. Um, look in the New Testament and find a something in the New Testament that matches the Old Testament. Okay. And if there's if it's there in both, then you say, All right, okay, I should do that. If it's okay, now we can eat all things back in the Old Testament. There were clean and unclean animals. Now everything's clean. Anything 
you know, every creature of God is good and nothing to be refused. Okay, then you compare the two. Question, how to get out of minimum wage situation, college or what? Um, very easy, you know, there, and that is to come up with something that you can do for yourself. Um, don't ever get into debt for any reason. Um, the way to build wealth is to not be in debt. There are plenty of economists that would agree with me on that. Um, Dave Ramsey, I think, would be one that you could watch and whatever else that would tell you how to build wealth. And, and take it with a grain of salt. They're going to tell you to invest in the stock market. Don't do that. Um, certain investments and whatever. And I don't agree with investments. I think that, you know, in terms of stock market stuff. Um, but you get into some kind of a um, thing that you can do for yourself, being in um, a business for yourself. That's the way to get away from the minimum minimum wage thing and and live cheap okay uh, don't live above your means that's also very important and you know you need to be saved if you're not I don't know Lord will give you wisdom in other words Question, will Christians who submit to church building lose their inheritance into the millennial kingdom? If they stay in it long enough, yeah. Because you become worthless. You just become a little socialite and whatever else. Um, can you receive the Holy Spirit without speaking in tongues? Absolutely. Sure. The Holy Spirit will come and he will guide you into all truth. Uh, tongues refer a sign. Um, so yeah <clears throat> question what do you think about investing in gold I know Jeremiah Babe recommends it the the precious metals thing um, what's going to happen is they will allow the price to go back up for a little while before the whole cryptocurrency mark of the beast system comes in cryptocurrency being not physical money it's just all digital type of thing I do believe that the the value of gold and silver is going to come up for a little while and why well because then some people will will you know sell at that point in time bull and bear markets in investing you know bull is when the market goes up bears when it comes down and they'll let it come up a little bit and then people sell here and a bunch because people say oh gold's going up it's going up it's continuing to go up Wow, that now's the time to buy it if, while there's still some left. Create a panic buy. The rich people sell off their gold at that point in time. The people will buy it, and then the system crashes. It'll peak, and then it goes boom and crashes down. The rich people can come in, buy it back, and then they'll just sit on it. And then they bring in digital currency, the market to be system, and the gold and silver is worthless at that point in time. And that's what the Bible says in the book of James. All right, uh, they've heaped together gold and silver for the last days, and it and the rust of them will be a testimony against them. Rust not being that they physically rust, but it just means that they're no good. Okay. Um. So this one here. Do you know of any good herbs that are known to fight nausea, dizziness? I've tried ginger. Don't know if there's any. Is something better? Some of the brethren can answer, Sister Emma, on that one. I'm trying to think. Um, ginger is a good one, definitely. Uh, hmm. That's a good question. I, I'm sorry, I don't know a good one on that. Maybe some of the brethren can put some uh, things in the comments. Sorry, I can't answer that one, Sister. Um, Question. Hey, brother, I work at a gas station and I'm surrounded by drunk people, homeless drug addicts, and lots of profanity and cursing in Jesus' name. Should I get a new job? I have to provide. You have to provide. That's the main thing. Keep that in mind. But just simply say, okay, Lord, you know the situation. I'm vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked around here. Um, would you like me to get a new job, Lord? Could you provide a new job? That's the way that works. Do you know how long the judgment seat of Christ and the white, right? 
or the white throne judgment will be. It will take years. Well, it's going to be up in eternity, so I don't. I, there's no time up there. You know, John writes about the space of half an hour at one point in the book of Revelation. So we'll have a perception of time, but there won't be a, some kind of a clock over there on the wall or something. So I don't think it's possible to know that. Um, man, we're getting a lot of stuff. Chamomile, maybe. Yeah, chamomile is good for sort of the upset stomach thing. Yeah, thank you. That's a good one. Um, try uh, ginkgo biloba for dizziness. I'm not real familiar with that. I've heard of it, but I haven't used it enough to say one way or the other. Um, how does one talk to God in one's heart? Um, by meditating on scripture. By word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Um, question what should a Christian do when they are harassed and ridiculed by the lost um, well, that depends on the situation. If it's a situation that you can just say, well, you know, the Bible says that you're going to all have to stand before God. A uh, time will come that you'll get tired of your life of sin and you walk away from him. If you can't walk away from him, then, you know, it just, just uh, you know, try your best to witness to him. Try your best to say, okay, let me ask you a question. What's your problem with the Bible? And just, you know, get into that and, uh, you know, just different ways to, to witness to them and things like that. It, you know, best idea is just separation. Get away from them. That's what I would recommend if you can. If not, then you've got to do your best to witness to them. You're appointed to it. You know, people are going to make fun of it. They made fun of Jesus. So, um, okay. Question Should I be in reading the Old Testament first or start with the New Testament? Um, well, if you've never read through the Bible, I would say the New Testament you know, is, is you know best place to start. But certainly the Old Testament, there's a lot of really good things in the Old Testament. You're, you're going to run into the thing of the genealogies where, you know, this guy begat this guy, this guy begat that guy. And that stuff is all about leading up to Jesus Christ. Um, so that might not seem like it's very important. Um, so... But uh, it's important to the Lord. So it's, it's about him. It's about Jesus Christ is what the Bible is about. Oh, good question. Question. Do you think that the banks are going to crash soon? Should we take our money out of the bank? I have no idea what in the world is going on. And no other economist out there. I'm not an economist. I shouldn't say other. But no economist really knows what's going on. Quite frankly, um, because we have there's no precedent in history like this um, with this level of debt, this level of money, money printing and digital currency and everything else. Um, the banks. Will they crash soon? Well, people are taking cash out and that's OK. And I think in good in some ways it's a good idea. But if you take out too much, hyperinflation comes in and you get wiped out that way because you have stacks of cash and now it becomes useless that, you know, all this bailout stuff and everything else is a bad idea. You know, it's going to lead to, you know, hyperinflation. Um, but the problem is that there's also the eviction crisis, which is now happening. Uh, all the people that were in forbearance, in other words, they weren't making monthly payments on their mortgages. It's due and they spent their bailout money on new vehicles and new all kinds of stuff. And now you know, the banks are going to get this huge influx of people that aren't making payments and they're going to get all these houses and things and cars and whatever else that they will be able to confiscate. Where's it going to go? I have no idea. It's crazy to think about, you know, what's coming. Um, should you take your money out of the bank? Well, I'd say have some money out, but don't take out a whole lot. And well, I don't know. <laughs> it's very difficult to know right now. Um, make sure that you can feed yourself. You know, I think is a, an important thing. 
Um, if you're in debt, pay off your debts. Uh, if you can get away from the city, if you're in the city, you can get away from it, get away from it. You know, if you have a car and you can afford to get a van instead, that some place where you can bug out and get into the van and get out of town, I would say do that. Um, something you have to pray about. That's a very good question. Um, With employers asking their employees to wear masks, is it a good idea for Christians to open their own businesses so we can make our own rules? Very good idea. Yes. Excellent idea. Um, banks will not give you cash when the real collapse comes, so you better get it out now if I were you. Yeah, that's there. Absolutely. I mean, look at Argentina, the, the collapse in Argentina. You know, people outside the bank saying, you know, they just took it. You know, they just took all my money. I worked so hard all these years, you know. So, um, yeah. Um, okay, I'm trying to see if there's any other questions here. A little bit past noon. Anything physical has value. Well, yeah, there's there's some truth to that. Physical assets are better than fake money in a bank, certainly. But uh, you know, if you buy a bunch of electronics, they're not going to be worth anything in the future. Um, you have to, yeah, useful stuff too. Yeah, um, you know, you have to make sure that you're investing soundly. Okay, what would people need? Um, what would people need? Uh, you know, and that they'd be willing to barter for or whatever else, because barter will be there, you know, if the economy collapses. Um, question, what's the hottest it, it gets up there in Maine during the summer? Well, it, usually it's been pretty cool since we've been here for a number of years, but uh, this summer has been really hot, really hot, very dry. It's been pretty miserable. <laughs> um, being in a tiny house uh, has, you know, it's not been easy. <laughs> oh, man. It was 86 degrees last night when we went to bed. So, um, yeah. Uh, it's been a hot summer. It gets up into the 90s. It's been up into the 90s a lot, and that's that's rough. Uh, we are of northern blood, and I sleep best when it's about 40 to 45 degrees in that range um, in the room where we're sleeping not outside. I'm saying we like it to be very cold when we sleep. And so sleeping in 80 degree temperatures is not easy. Um, I've been having a lot of hard times with that actually. So <clears throat> question, is there any issue difference talking to the Lord on different languages, not calling him Y H W H like Yahweh or Elohim Hebrew? Um, I just, you know, I call in the names that are in my King James Bible. This is this is the word of God. This is my standard. So I pray to him in the name of Jesus Christ. Do you use air conditioning? We can't. We live off grid. So battery powered fans, um, like the Walt, you know, cordless fan type of deal. Um, so, yeah. Yes, I did answer your question. And yes, I think Christians should uh, open up their own businesses. Look for opportunities. Look for things that you can, ways that you can make money. 
um, that is extremely important going forward into the future. Um, if you're just relying on your job or whatever else, it's it's going to be bad. Okay, you know, there's there's different ways that you can make a living. It's not even I have to open up a storefront or whatever else. Just start doing odd jobs for people. Um, if you look and you see, hey, nobody's doing this in my town. Um, you know, get into scrapping metal. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of things that you can do. I know um, some brethren I knew at one point in time were actually, they bought a food dehydrator and they were dehydrating different types of fruit and whatever else and selling them locally, you know, and, and um, you know, you're not going to make a huge amount of money in some things, but it's an income. So there's a lot of different ways that you can do it. Um, Question, do you think that the government will s select certain people to take out kill with this vaccine? Absolutely. Yeah. If you look under the thing of the fun vax, the fundamentalist vaccine, the vaccine for fundamentalists, that was uh, actually at the Pentagon, I think it was, um, that they talked about this and the scientists were saying we can redo the brains of fundamentalists. Um, so, uh, yeah, I think that they will, you know, they'll have records and everything else and stuff. That's why you have to refuse the vaccine. To say I'm not taking it. Um, yeah. You know, selling things on eBay, Craigslist. Yep. That's a good way to make money. Kind of off the record. Donating blood plasma to make money acceptable to God. Um, Leviticus reference to blood being the life force, or is it just a Jehovah's Witness thing? Um, no, the life of the flesh is in the blood. And making money off of donating your blood, I think, is a bad idea, quite frankly. I, you know, you're giving it to the medical establishment. Don't give blood to them. So. All right. Um, I guess I'm going to call it quits for now. <clears throat> I will be doing a live stream here coming up on this. Uh, it's been brought to my attention, this um, Andrew Schluter, little Catholic hireling. And he came out with this thing saying Jesus burned in hell. And he came up with some arguments. I answered it years ago, 2015. Stephen Anderson was saying that Jesus burned in hell. Um, and he came, Andrew, Andrew Sluver came up with a bunch of new arguments that I haven't heard before, new ridiculous heresies. And so I'm going to be doing a live stream on that, answering his video point by point. So, uh, cause there's some things I didn't bring out in my original study. So I want to do this to warn the brethren because the guy claims to, claims to be a Bible believer and he's another fraud, another monetized fraud. And he's, his channel is going to get big because he's monetizing. So just like uh um you know gene kim and robert breaker monetized you know pbi people pensacola bible institute people so yeah um and we'll end with this brother jacob here question can i request prayer for my book i will be done typing this week so i am excited to be done um brother jacob if you don't know has been writing a book I'm um, exposing the whole Trinity, pagan Trinity thing and showing the biblical Godhead, how it works out from the scriptures. He's shown me some of the things that he's been writing, some of the things the Lord has showed him. I mean, he's read a lot of books on it, um, invested a lot of time, a lot of money into this, his research. He's been writing for well over a year. So if everybody could just please pray for Brother Jacob, that the Lord gets him through the last part of finishing the book we're going to help actually with with uh you know proofreading it and everything so um if everybody could just pray for him that the lord gives him the strength to get it done and and um you know everything that he's gone through so and that the lord would help him to be able to sell the book in terms of getting it out there to people um so and he's done a lot of work on it so but that's going to be it um, I guess we're going to close here. And so we will see everybody um, in future upcoming live streams. And um, 
So I hope everybody has a good day. Stay in the word of God. Stand firm. Don't back down. So that is going to be it. Thank you very much for watching. See you in the next video.